हेलो स्टूडेंट्स माई सी डॉक्टर विकास विजय एंड आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू अवर चैनल अकाउंट्स गुरु इन दिस वीडियो वी आर जस्ट गोइंग टू शेयर सम इम्पॉर्टेंट ट्रांजेक्शंस रिगार्डिंग चैप्टर अकाउंटिंग इक्वेशन फॉर क्लास इलेवेंथ विच विल हेल्प यू इन द कमिंग एग्जामिनेशन सो वट आई हैव डन आई हैव जस्ट गैदर्ड ट्वेंटी ट्रांजेक्शंस विच विल गिव यू अ बेटर प्रैक्टिस फॉर एग्जामिनेशन सो लेट एस स्टार्ट दिस example in which we have taken 20 transactions but before i start let me just ask you bachche in case if you have not subscribed our channel accounts guru just go and subscribe so that you receive such useful videos in future regularly so let us start today's uh, question and chapter accounting equation with 20 best possible transactions so let us start with the very first transaction in which mr vijay started business with cash 80000 goods 30000 and furniture 40000 as we all understand when the proprietor or the owner of a business start the business he can start the business with cash by investing cash or he can bring in some amount of furniture or goods anything from his own side so whatever is invested by the owner in a business is known as capital so we must understand that only cash is not a part of capital even he can bring stock he can bring furniture or any other asset into the business and the combined amount of these three will constitute capital fine so in this case the capital is 150000 second transaction he has purchased goods on credit from y 15000 and on cash from x for rupees 10000 so in this case the goods are purchased for 15000 on credit so we can take it separately in this case goods are 15000 so we are adding in the stock and since it is on uh, credit therefore we will add in the creditors In the same example, the goods are purchased for cash from Mr. X for rupees ten thousand. So we have to just see once the cash is given, it means what we have to ignore X. So the goods have come in, so we are adding in the stock, and the cash has gone out. We are subtracting from the cash. So this is the accounting equation for this. We are taking the individual transaction as a combine. You can solve at the end. Now. third point goods purchased from x was sold for rupees 10000 it means the goods costing 10000 which we bought from x it were for 10000 these goods were of 10000 and these are sold for 12000 so in this case the cash has come in 12000 and whereas the goods they have gone out 10000 that is the cost price always remember the cost price will be subtracted from the stock and the profit will be added to the capital okay next sometimes the student they assume that since uh, in this case Uh, the goods were sold on credit fine so in this case the goods are sold for cash and since cash has come in so it is the amount which is to be added to the cash price sometimes they are confused what amount to be added in cash and what amount to be subtracted from the stock so children always remember cost price is to be treated in stock and the selling price is to be treated in the cash price if these goods were sold on credit then we have to take debtors here okay Now next transaction, goods costing ten thousand was sold at a profit of twenty five percent on cost. Just kindly focus here. It is given cost. Okay, so this twenty five percent you have to add to the cost price. So we'll get the selling price. It is shown here. Cost price plus profit is equal to selling price. And out of this selling price, we have received seven thousand cash. That is written here seven thousand cash. And the balance is on credit. That is, when once you read the credit word, please don't jump to a conclusion that it is creditor. Please understand when the word credit is given along with the word sale or sold, it means it is a credit sale, and we have to take it as a debtor. So please remember, here the balance amount of fifty five hundred is debtors. So what we will do in this transaction, the cost price again we will subtract from the stock. the cash amount received will be added to the cash and the amount of credit sale that is the debtors we will open a new column for debtor and we will add here and the profit we will add in the capital so as per the accrual basis since uh, the total sale is of 12500 therefore the entire amount of profit we have added to the capital though the money received is less fine so these are the four transaction now moving to the next Here, interest on capital is rupees fifteen thousand. This is a very important transaction because the business. If we assume the, as we know, the business and the partner and the proprietor or the owner, they are two different person as per the separate entity concept. So the business is paying interest to the owner on the capital investment. For business, it is an expense. For the proprietor or the owner, it is a profit. So all the expenses are adjusted in capital. Therefore, it is subtracted from capital. And for the owner, it is a profit. Therefore, it is added to the capital so fine so no treatment to be done on the ss side and no treatment to be done on the liability side we will adjust only in the capital same thing we will do in interest on drawing later next in next transaction the 
cash rupees 10000 and goods worth rupees 5000 are withdrawn by the proprietor for personal use so in this case cash is subtracted 10000 goods yani stock is subtracted by 5000 and the combined amount is known as drawing which will be subtracted from the capital in the next case interest on drawing is rupees 2000 again with the same concept of separate entity concept interest on drawing is a profit for the owner and expense for the uh, it is the expense for the owner and income for the firm therefore it is added and subtracted in the capital itself okay so remember these are the two items which are added and subtracted in the capital itself one is what interest on capital and other is what interest on drawing moving down to next one wages outstanding what is the meaning of outstanding it means the expense is due but not yet paid therefore nothing to be done on the ss side we have to subtract from the capital because we have received the services again as per the accrual concept it is our expense doesn't matter we have not paid the money but it is our expense therefore capital is subtracted and we have to open a new column in the liability side wages outstanding it is a liability next point sold goods for cash rupees 5000 costing 6000 now in this case the cost is 6000 four students out of 10 students what they assume 1000 rupees is of profit again uh, just read carefully sold goods for cash 5000 costing 6000 so 1000 is 1000 is what uh, just kindly see 1000 is what loss and not the profit one not the profit fine okay so in this case just see cash is coming in 5000 stock is uh, we have to subtract the cost price and the capital it is a loss of rupees 1000 so 1000 is of loss so always remember cost price to be adjusted in what stock cash we have to adjust in the cash and the loss is 1000 moving on to the next transaction accrued interest this is also very important transaction interest accrued interest it means the interest is earned but not yet received it means what uh, uh, we have to open a separate column under the asset as accrued interest and we have to add in the capital same as per the accrual concept though the money is not yet received but still it is income for the proprietor for the owner for the business why because we have given the services next example is commission received in advance here we have received the money but we have not yet given the service not rendered the services so it means it's a liability for the business so cash is coming 15,000 and on the liability side we'll open cash received in advance as a liability next point rent due but not paid it means the rent is due but we have not paid rent as yet so in this case uh, what we have to do we have to subtract from the capital that is because we have taken the services and we have to open a new column on the liability side rent outstanding again prepaid insurance in this case we have paid the money but the money uh, but the service is not yet received so what we have to do cash is subtracted and we have to open a, another column as a prepaid insurance under the ss side okay nothing to be done on the rhs right hand side next point depreciation on furniture 2500 if there is a depreciation it means it is a non cash expense and we will never subtract on the cash side please always remember we will not touch cash some students i have seen they subtract from the cash it is wrong so we have to subtract from the furniture and it is an expense for the owner so it will be subtracted from the capital next uh, cash paid to creditors rupees 15 uh, rupees 13,500 now we can see in the transaction number two the creditors were rupees 15,000 okay so the creditors were rupees 15,000 and now we are making payment 13,500 in full settlement it means what we are paying uh, 1500 rupees less to the creditors so what we have to do this 1500 we have to add to the capital because it's profit for the owner and since it is mentioned the creditors are paid in full settlement therefore we are subtracting the full amount from the liability side and the actual cash paid we are subtracting from the cash so always remember actual cash paid is subtracted from the cash and the full amount is paid is subtracted from the liability side under the head creditors and the profit is added to the capital if this transaction uh, we can change the transaction like cash received from debtors in full settlement then the balancing figure will be lost and it will be subtracted from the capital fine now next transaction cash paid into bank in this case what we have to do we have to open another column bank column and we can add here and we will subtract from the cash okay so this 10,000 rupees we will subtract from cash and will add in the bank you will study later on in the cash book chapter that these transactions are known as contra entries okay where we deposit the cash into the bank or we will withdraw cash from the bank for office use next transaction cash received from debtors rupees 5000 in full settlement this was the transaction we were talking about like in in case if we sell goods on credit to some person it means they are debtors they are debtors and if we receive some less amount it means it is an expense for us so we can see the transaction number four in this the debtors were rupees 5500 so we are receiving 5000 in full settlement so what we will do we will add in cash 5000 
and what we have seen in debtors since it is full settlement in debtors we will subtract full 5500 and the 500 rupees is profit we, uh, it's a loss is a loss and we will subtract from the capital always remember when we receive less it is loss for the firm and this loss will be subtracted from the capital but if you're paying less amount to the creditor it was profit it was profit so therefore we added in the capital always remember this okay next point receive security deposit from tenants tenants uh, are the people to whom we provide the uh, premises on rent they have given us security deposit this deposit we have to return back to the tenants when they move out from the house when they leave the house after the agreed period we have to return back so it's a liability so what we have to do we have to add in the cash 7000 rupees and similarly open a new column security deposit amounting rupees 7000 fine so cash add and liabilities add next point borrowed loan from bank rupees 20000 this is a very very good point when one when we borrow the money from the bank bank doesn't pay us cash it just uh, transfer the amount in our account so what we have to do we have to open bank column okay not the cash column but bank column so 20000 in bank column uh, and bank loan as liability new column okay so this is the bank loan taken from the bank now this is a very important transaction and student they commonly get confused in this like on this loan we are paying interest 2000 so please remember when we are paying interest this interest is expense is an expense for the firm like rent paid so this amount 2000 what we have to do we will subtract 2000 from cash and we will subtract from capital because it is an expense of the firm but if you're paying the installment of rupees 5000 that is you're paying a part of the loan 5000 it is like as if you are making payment to the creditors fine it is not your expense so what you will do you will subtract 5000 from your cash and from the loan since you have already opened the loan uh, column and then you will head from this head you will subtract 5000 and now you can just combine all the transactions and you can get the final transaction and you will be able to understand all the 20 transactions so i hope you will be able to understand all the 20 transactions and after this uh, i am really hopeful that you will uh, solve the examination question very uh, like uh, without any difficult with, uh, without any difficulty and you will be able to clear all the, the your doubts and queries once you see the video in full okay so before just closing down let me just ask you again uh, i can request you all if you like the video please thumbs up uh, just subscribe the channel share with your friends because good things are to be shared okay so bye bye take care my dr vikas vijay just best wishes for your coming examination bye bye take care god bless you